remember this vividly. Six years old, life flashing before my eyes. He tried to drown me. What? She just looks at me and goes, no, you're dirty. And she met the color of my skin. I'm Melissa. I am Jaya. And welcome to Pigeonhole, Pigeonhole, where we unbox relatable topics to find new perspectives. We pigeonhole ourselves and trying to create content. What if we just did something that meant something to us and put it out there without trying to pigeonhole ourselves? And our podcast was born. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pigeonhole episode two. Yay! <laughs> I am Melissa, and this is Jaya. Hello. Hi. Hi. So last week was our first episode. A is for anxiety. Yes. How do you think that went? I mean, let's ask our viewers. You tell us. <laughs> We're filming in front of a live studio audience of one, yeah. but he has yet to give us any yeah. feedback. How was it? How was it? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well, it's accurate. You know what's funny about A is for anxiety, because since I'm actively dealing with anxiety right now, which is what we talked about, uh, fun fact, your antidepressant can backfire mm -hmm. and make you anxious. I mean, I guess I should know that as a doctor, but right now I'm just purely the patient. And so I'm on Will Butrin, and my doctor, who's also my friend, so we, he's my classmate, upped my Will Butrin, and it made me a crazy person. And it wasn't until someone pointed out that like I actively became more crazy with the increase of the medication. Who medica pointed out that you were crazy? Well, my therapist and then my husband. <laughs> But, you know, she suggested it first. She's like, there's a noticeable uptick in your paranoia and anxiety. When did you increase the medication? And I was like, three weeks ago. She's like, hmm. And I was like, oh. Wow. And then he said, oh, yeah, that can totally happen. And I was like, okay, well, let's get off that medication. Mm -hmm. So anyway, hopefully we figure it out. Oh, yeah, we're going to do new and goods in a second. Yes, but first we, we wanted to remind you who we are in case you forgot. Yeah. So I'm a video person. I've always kind of done that my whole life since I was like, five and that's just who I am I don't really know how else to describe myself except a weirdo who likes to make videos all the time where were you born and <laughs> oh I was born in Raleigh North Carolina um grew up in South Carolina moved to Pennsylvania moved to Arkansas moved to Texas moved to Louisiana wow I call Louisiana home though because um ever since Josh and I have been together which is about almost 12 years now wow this has been like my favorite place so Aww, I love Louisiana. that's sweet fun fact we all got married not to each other but like to our husbands at the on the same year like within a week of each other <laughs> yeah we were talking about last week maybe we undercut our bios like if you're actually stumbling onto this vodcast and have no idea of who we are that maybe we didn't actually introduce ourselves um or didn't tell you who we are so anyway i am jaya McSharma, um, and I am originally from Alexandria, Louisiana, which is two hours south of Shreveport. Yay. And I moved here in 2002 from medical school, so uh, I have my MD from LSU, which is uh, a great school. And But I've never wanted to be a doctor, so my passion is writing and acting, uh, which I got to start doing because of these two, New Months Productions, and my husband, Jacob, we all started making stuff together. And so my true passion is content creating just like y'all and then we make short films and n interview series and all that and I have a baby uh, who is three and a half months old his name is Ari and I am a first generation Indian American so when I was thinking about like why are we making this vodcast it's like I think both of us because of our upbringing which you'll get to know more about each and every episode hopefully you agree that we have kind of a unique perspective to add on things if you don't that's cool too but it's just like we just kind of wanted to talk about things that were important to us and see where it led absolutely and she's very good she's very articulate when asked to describe myself my brain just goes <laughs> And I don't know. I don't know what to say. So, um, anyways, I, I can throw in where I went to college. Southern Arkansas University. They're what was the mascot? Uh, ooh, it was a mule rider, which is weird. Wait. <laughs> a mule rider? A mule rider. Is that a person? It's like a, a person, person riding a mule. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I can't believe you asked me that because it just was the perfect question for the school that I went to. Please tell me you have a t-shirt that says like, go mule riders. Uh, yeah, there was mule riders all over everything. <laughs> it, it was interesting. Okay, M, M might have to be for mule rider when we get hey. to that letter in the alphabet because yeah. I need to know more behind that. <laughs> Maybe we should get started. Okay. Okay. So t we're up to the letter B. What is B for? B is today, it's for bullying. However, we had decided at one point to go with Botox and babies, then it became Botox and bullying. But now, 
we now just it's just want bullying. To talk about bullying because we've had some some real experiences with that. Yeah, and I think also because we have so much to say about all three of those topics, Botox, babies, and bullying, that we decided we couldn't pigeonhole. No, that doesn't actively work. Uh, we didn't. We couldn't contain all of that into one episode. So why try to do too much in one episode? Hopefully, we'll be coming around to the letter B again. Correct. Um, but also because I just got Botox. So if my forehead is super shiny, that's why. Um, and also because of these lights. So I kind of want to do this so my forehead's less shiny, but we felt like that might be weird. Uh, we can do it. We can do it the whole time. But I, I was watching the Oscars last night, and so now that I've gotten Botox, it was the very first time I got it like a week after I turned 39. So it was like January 14th, I think. Um, with Dr. Pennington, who's the best in town, if you're going to go to anybody... Maybe she'll sponsor this podcast. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've noticed now, because my, my forehead is so smooth, so light just like reflects off of it, which is cool, but it, it's so shiny that I'm almost self-conscious about it. But I noticed watching the Oscars, like every actress I could tell that had Botox because they had that triangle of shiny light that you probably see on my forehead now. So I was like, oh, she's had Botox. Oh, she's had Botox. So, you know. But see, that's what I liked about it. When I tried it back in 2015... That's the one thing I did like about it was the shiny, because my skin's usually so dry and it just made me look so dewy. But I hated the Spock eyebrows. Yes. I, I looked like this when I was, it was this, terrible. The Spock eyebrow is real. and uh, But not on you. Well, no. So I got Botox and then every time I did, made this face, which I apparently make all the time, my eyebrows just like went up like an arrow. And, and Spock brow is real. So when I went back from my follow-up appointment, do you know what the solution to that is? More. More. <laughs> <laughs> just no expressions ever. So some, somehow, instead of like just letting the Botox wear off, I got talked into more Botox. So they're like, oh, we can fix that. We'll just put more Botox here and here. So Did now- they give it to you for free? No. Oh, <laughs> oh no, of course not. Um, maybe when they sponsor our vodcast, we'll get free bo Botox. I mean, but anyway, that's a thing. so it's like, this is, I don't know. What does it look like? Does it look weird? <laughs> It feels very heavy. Like no, I can't see, you've got it. good eyebrows. Like I just I don't, don't see it on you. The way Ooh, it was not good on me. <laughs> so clearly, we have a lot to say about Botox. But we, before this turns into a Botox episode, we'll get to the bullying. Yeah. Okay. What do we have to say about bullying? Bullying is bad. Bullying is bad, and <laughs> we are victims. And we, who knows? Maybe even some of us are perpetrators. Ooh. Could it be you, Twist. sir? Could it be you, sir? <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, I think we're going to share some bullying stories. Bullying is an epidemic. If bullying is, is, a, is a disease, which I guess you could call it that, is it actually more prevalent or are we just more aware of it because of, you know, mm. it being such a topic of conversations nowadays? And I sent you that article recently, which kind of triggered this discussion as well. Recently, a teenager intervened on behalf of someone who's being bullied, and then the bully ended up killing the defender of the victim. Did I say that right? But basically someone yeah. tried to stop someone from bullying and he got killed for it, which is insane. So I That's, do think that yeah. the ante has been upped in terms of bullying because I just don't think we would have heard a story like that when we were kids. Mm -hmm. No, that's not normal. No. That's not your typical bullying story. This is, it, I don't know what kind of world this is now. As my dad would say, this country is crazy, but he's been saying that since I was like four years old. Mm -hmm. But of course, but he it's always, getting worse. It's getting worse. So anyway, we were, we were both going to share a story about us being bullied because I was surprised to hear that Melissa had been bullied because when you look at her, she's like, you think she's living the life and she's so gorgeous and she's got her life together and she's so talented. So someone not like her, I would have guessed before I got to know her, would have been like the mean girl, you well, know, because I was like, oh, she's got it all. She clearly was a popular girl. Look at if, her. If anybody was bullied, <laughs> she did the bullying, which I strangely meant as a compliment. So, but anyway, she's been bullied and we're going to hear all about it. Let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yikes. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, let me just start by saying, um, I feel like I knew what bullying was almost before I knew what real friendship was, which is mm -hmm. crazy. Cause like this That's all started awful. for me young. There was this mom who had kids in the same activities I was in and those kids didn't like me very much. And I'd go and 
tattle basically like they don't want to play with me Aww, and stuff how like old that. are you at this point at that point i was five and six years old if i had imaginary friends i like to like i guess talk to myself like act out movie scenes and things like that so of course yeah i'm gonna get made fun of and that's to be expected people ragging on you but it got a little worse than that and, and i'm not blaming the kids really kids are gonna be kids but it, <laughs> the mother would dismiss me constantly saying I was an overly sensitive child. They weren't doing anything wrong. We and should come up with a name for her. Maybe not her real name, but I feel like these types of characters are all called Karen now. So okay, let's can, call her Karen. Okay. okay. Which, poor Karen, <laughs> but somehow somehow that happened. So. Right. No, so this Karen, fits. This yeah. fits. Um, so Karen had a son like twice my age, and he always bullied me. We were all at the pool, and he tried to drown me. What? Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> Casual, this is not bullying. Right? This is like Casual. attempted homicide. So, what I do mean, you mean he tried he, to drown he you? Obviously, like he let me back up, but he held me underwater for way, 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 way too long. Um, oh and then God. just ran off. Like I'm thinking I'm going to die. I remember this vividly. Six years old, life flashing before my eyes. I can't get up. Oh, wow. This boy way older than me is holding me underwater. So my mom tells his mom what happened. And the lady just says, boys will be boys. Mm-mm. So I don't I don't I don't know I just don't have words this is so messed up yeah so I mean it I, listen I get that at five and six years old I might have been a crybaby I might have been a little overly sensitive which but is as a, fine for a I five guess. year old or a six year old my god that's normal but as a as a parent it's completely irresponsible to just let your kids be bullies because I just don't understand it I, I guess she just thought I was weak that my mom was weak for you know standing up for me like just raise your tough you know is that kind of mentality and what do you think that was about i mean she's the adult in charge you're expected to be protected by the adult in charge so mm -hmm. i can't imagine what that did to your psyche at that time it shaped everything my mom obviously stood up to the behavior and she and i of course were completely iced out of that group mm -mm. which is you know it's a small town that lasted all throughout middle school to where i felt completely insecure you were the victim but you got punished for saying something yeah what does that do to you like, it, does it, it make you just like not ever want to say when something's wrong or what it did to me was see my mom was always super 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 supportive of me always validated my feelings and said you're you're in the right here 100 percent. good so i guess what it did to me was it made me feel this disconnect with the external world aside from my that's why i'm so close to my mom she's still my best friend because it's like she was always there for me from the very very beginning both my parents were but i i went into like middle school with that attitude of why can't everybody like me mean like why what do i have to do to prove that i'm worthy of acceptance like that clogging was a thing clogging myself. yeah so i did clog like the oh, dance I would show you the but dance i can form. throw something up on screen yeah, yeah throw something on. i need to see this yeah. <laughs> like didn't you know like they like dutch like people tap. do or something i'll just have to stand up okay okay like oh yeah <laughs> 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 Not gonna be all out of breath. Oh my god! I I wanted to be on the best team, right? Like, of course. And so I would sit and watch the recital tapes and teach myself how to do it, so that I could fit in and be in the the cool group and stuff Aww. like that. I taught myself at my house how to do backflips so that I could be impressive in gymnastics and cheer. Wow! So I felt like I had to work ten times as hard, which in a way it's a good thing because yeah. that's where a lot of that drive comes from. Yeah, right. But I would never. I can't credit this woman yeah. for like, but it literally started with her. I don't think I would have had the insecurity issues that I did. I think it was just adults in that town in general because when I was in first grade, I had a teacher who bullied me in front of the entire classroom. A teacher? A teacher. See, because of the Botox, I can't <laughs> raise my eyebrows enough to express my surprise, but <laughs> obviously I must have been a little bit of a crybaby because I was crying about something. Okay, but I was six again, first grade. I don't think you can call a six year old a crybaby. <laughs> That's just like adequately expressing emotion. I guess. So I was crying and she goes, oh, well, let's all cry about it and starts fake crying and mocking me. And the whole class goes, wah, wah. And I'm sitting oh there like God. in the most shame that a person can have at six years old. Like, holy crap, literally everybody hates okay, me. Okay, that one's even worse. I mean, <laughs> Karen sounds awful, but yeah. a teacher leading the class mm -hmm. and heckling you. Yeah. <laughs> so the hell? I mean, I guess that's where my insecurity issues came from because when I got out of that town, 
I made friends immediately. Mm. Nobody had any problems. Wow. It was just a toxic atmosphere, yeah. like very clicky, very mean. And so I I'm, just, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. If you, uh, I'm just curious if you as an adult, which you are, you're an adult, <laughs> could go back and say something to like, what would you want, have want, wanted to say in that moment to Every, either one of those women? Oh, to those women? Yeah. To the adults, because they seem to be the worst, the worst of the bullies. Yeah, I mean, probably everything that my mom would have said at the time, but yeah. it didn't do any good. Like, right. my mom was always completely in the right, and she stood up for the right things. Right. Good intentions. It's just the people there were very... I hate uh, those people. 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 I hate those people. I think they're mean, <laughs> and I think they're real rude, and I hope that they have to... I don't know. I hope they have to like beg you for something in the future so you can say no, but I guess that wouldn't be the adult oh, thing. No, they to seem do. to be doing fine. That's of the course. thing. That they all seem to be doing fine. And and I pulled the best case scenario out of it that I could. Right. But at the same time, shame. Shame. Question. Shame. So you know I love Rachel Hollis. Maybe we can get her to um sponsor one of these cuz this is a Hollis water bottle, very hey. shiny and pink. Um so she has had a lot of terrible things happen to her. She's one of my favorite like motivational speakers. So she says she she hates the saying everything happens for a reason because yeah. it's kind of a cop out in a lot of ways, but she says everything doesn't happen for a reason, but you can always find meaning in the things that happened. So the question is, you kind of say that you are who you are today because so would you if someone said you could go back and change it, would you would you change what happened? No. I mean, I, I was gonna face adversity one way or another. I got I got bullied by other people too. Um, there's no way I'd be who I am. The exact Without those who experiences. I am. Yeah, because if everything had been easy for me, then I could have ended up being a jerk. You could be boring. Could be. That would be the worst. I mean, I'm already kind of boring, so jeez. No. no, you're not. <laughs> He's nodding. <laughs> you think I'm boring? You married her. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just such an interesting concept because it's like, yeah, they, just, they helped make who you, you are. You know what I would change? I would just want them to be reprimanded for that behavior. That's yeah. it. I mean, I'd still go through it, put it on me, but like, right. they can't just walk around thinking they're in the right for that kind of behavior. Oh, That's I what agree. Oh me. my God. I could, that could be a two hour vodcast. Yeah. Um, but th I think the beautiful thing is that you had a mom who stood up for you mm -hmm. the entire time and she's still your best friend. And a lot of people don't even have that. Exactly. I don't know what I would have done without that. I would have just thought, what is wrong with this world? <laughs> what town in North, uh, South Carolina? But let me just say, I actually did have some really good friends while I was there. They accepted me despite my insecurities and my constant, like, why don't they like me? Do you know why they don't like me? Those dumb little middle school questions, you know? That, um, that last all throughout your adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> that never go away. But yeah, I mean, I had some really good friends while I was there. Good handful of friends. Yeah. Most of them could be trusted. Yeah. Well, that's good. That, I mean, that's all it takes, right? Yeah. Is that's it, all I ever needed. And then from good there, that's, women. that's where I'm like, that's what I always wanted. I was an ex I was born an extrovert, became an introvert because of circumstance. Hmm. Um, and I choose to be one now. Like, I like that. I like you choose having to be which one? An introvert. I like having a close circle of friends, like, you know, and so, but born talking to literally everyone who I, I loved people like they scared me out of that so <laughs> <laughs> that makes me kind of sad okay i'm gonna find these it's women fine. It's everything everything is fine this reminds me like that of that meme of the dog sitting in a house on fire <laughs> yeah. saying everything is fine please insert that in the top right okay. corner of this thing right now am i still shiny i don't care you gotta let it go i gotta let it go well uh my bullying story there's so many to choose from. Um, but, you know, I grew up brown, and I continue to be brown to this day. What? In a small <laughs> rural town in Alexandria. Uh, a small rural town called Alexandria in Louisiana. Uh, wonderful in a lot of ways. Um, and I love my hometown for a lot of reasons. But I was a, and I am, a brown Hindu girl who was going to school in a predominantly white Catholic school. And I was, I attended uh, St. Francis Cabrini because my mom was a teacher there. And so I got to go for free. That's the only reason hey. we're there. So. Uh, but the nuns and the teachers were really great. I mean, yeah. I find that this is a whole nother discussion, but I find that Catholics out of some other denominations that I've come up 
against <laughs> um, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my life experiences <laughs> tend to be really open-minded about certain things. Mm-hmm. And so they were always very welcoming to me. I mean, I was Hindu. Good. I was a Hindu girl in the choir. They let me come up and take communion and didn't tell me I wasn't supposed to. Uh, I just always went up during mass and took communion because I was hungry and I thought it was just like food. <laughs> so never turned down That's free food. Excellent. That's the Indian way. <laughs> but um, so I went to Cabrini in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And I felt very, I, okay, I should say I grew up as a Montessori kid. So I did not know that I was different for a long time. Like mm-hmm. culturally, I had no idea that being different could be thought of as bad, you know? And when you're a kid, all you want to do is fit in. Mm-hmm. That's the crux of a lot of it, yeah. you know? So I went to Cabrini and um, I started to feel out of place and I have so many bullying stories. I mean, I was a Girl Scout brownie and they like, pantsed me on the playground they what like I I wore my Girl Scout uniform to school one day because I had a meeting after school and they like yanked down my brownie pants and like called me a nerd and I was standing in my underwear on the playground in front of everyone that was like fourth grade wow that's that's traumatizing yeah it's a little traumatizing didn't like that (laughs) um but I was also a weird kid like you know, I had no, I didn't know any, they had all come up together Mm -hmm. and this was a completely new school for me. So I would just walk on the playground, playground alone, like determined not to try to have friends. I don't know. And they were like, do you want to come play with us? And I'd be like, no. And I'd keep walking. So I, yeah, I was kind of emo. (laughs) So in that respect, I get why they thought I was being a weirdo because I was, but anyway, there was this girl who I will not name but I have named in previous YouTube videos. And so this is just one example, one instance. So we were in social studies and what grade? Uh, it's, it's gotta be fourth or fifth grade, okay. not older than that for sure. Too old. Uh, we we're in social studies and we had to um, have colored pencils to color the maps of the uh, maps of the world or something like that, mm-hmm. the countries of the world. And I for, had forgotten mine, which like I was such a a goody goody that like you know I could just feel my IBS flaring up like oh my god I forgot colored pencils like oh I'm gonna be in so much trouble I was freaking out right so I asked this girl <laughs> I'll call her Karen too okay her name does actually start with a K mm, clues <laughs> clues um if I could borrow her co- colored pencils and she just looks at me and goes no you're dirty and I was like what do you mean I'm dirty and she meant the color of my skin and that was one of the pivotal moments in my childhood where I remember thinking what, the heck? what that told me was being brown is not a good thing. Oh, my God. And, and that notion was kind of reinforced several times, like, because the white guys in the class wouldn't want to date me because I was Indian. Like, they, you know, and but people would say things like this. And so I started developing this this way of thinking that. I hate being Indian and I just want to be white because I just wanted to fit in. It was me and Milton Polk, who was the only African-American boy in class. So we were the only two minorities in class out of the entire, you know, um, sixth grade or whatever grade we were in. And so they would always try to get us to date each other because there was no like crossing racial lines there. It's just super messed up. That sounds like a South Park episode. It's going to be her choice who she likes the most. There she is. Aw, that's awesome, Token. I'm happy for you. Why? Why are you happy for me? I don't know. These people. But of course, they were just, I guess they were just whatever, however they were raised. You know, I can't explain. A lot of those people ended up being my friends, you know, later and and ended up being wonderful people. But this one girl, it's just interesting. Because I had a YouTube series for a while, which maybe I'll, you know, um, start it back up again at some point called cat robes and coffee Mm -hmm. and i was talking about how traumatizing events in your childhood make you who you are and would you go back and change it and so i did name drop this girl (laughs) thinking that no one is ever gonna see this like my audience on youtube was like so we have a mutual friend who like sent her the video to watch otherwise i don't think she ever would have discovered it on her own (laughs) and so then our mutual friend sent me the screenshot of this girl Karen's reaction to my YouTube video and I mean I don't know I feel like if I saw someone say that I'd be like oh my god I was a kid what an idiot like I'm so sorry like I can't believe I said something like that but this girl instead chose to say oh my god how lame and boring her life must be must be that she's talking about me and she should thank me for being a doctor because I'm the reason that she is who she is today that was her response to my story about this video and I was like Okay, so some bullies just never grow up. They just don't. No. 
The, the, all Karens are the same. <laughs> all Karens are the same. This is I was mind blown. I was because I was gonna actually reach out to her and apologize. Like I shouldn't have said your name. You know, like that's on me. I guess that was. Well, okay. If she'd have been like, that kind of hurt my feelings that you called me out. I was just a kid. Like, yeah, that's one reaction. Right. But I mean, geez, it just kind of affirms everything. Yeah. So like then that, I that's didn't who feel, you are. I didn't feel that bad about it. But you know, Mindy Kaling calls out people in her book by name. So. Mm. Uh, Anyway, that's just, I don't know if that justifies what I did or not, but that's kind of the, th- the thinking that I was having at the time was, let me just be brutally honest about what happened to me. But anyway, I'm not saying her name again. I guess bullying always comes out on the bully, bully's part from some kind of insecurity or ignorance, mm-hmm. but it's all about when you're a kid wanting to fit in. So for the longest time, I just, I hated being Indian. It took me through the end of high school, maybe beginning of college for me to like start embracing my culture because my culture is always what made me so different from everyone else. Like my parents taught me how to speak, obviously, and they're amazing parents from India. So they mispronounced certain words. Like, not mispronounced, they said it with an Indian accent. Mm-hmm. So when I went to school, that's how I would say the word. So like the word comfortable, my mom says comfortable. And so I used to say oh, yeah. comfortable, which that's how it's spelled. I mean, come on. Yeah. But, you know, it was just another way to set me apart from everyone. And it's difficult being a first generation um, kid in America when like people use that as a point of saying you're not as good as we are because you're different. And that was the messaging. And but, clearly not true. Well, and I'm curious as to anyone out there, uh, I'm, w- I'm wondering if it's different now, if being different culturally is viewed as an asset, even by children now, which mm-hmm. I guess I'll find out because my kid is half Indian. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how people treat him now, because I feel like there's such a celebration of cultural diversity now. I just wonder. But anyway, we'll find out. So my surprising fact that you may not have known about bullying is that 35% of people who were surveyed in the 2017 annual bullying survey had sent a screenshot of someone's status to laugh at in a group sh- in a group chat. Uh, I guess the reason that surprised me is because I've totally done that and I didn't think of it as bullying. You know, right. when you take a screenshot of someone's Facebook status or Instagram and you send it to your friends like, what is this? But that is a form of bullying. Like, It's I guess, making fun of someone. Yeah, so it's not right. It's yeah. not right. It's not right, but at the same time, I, I suppose it's a little better than, of course, targeting them directly and yeah. making fun of them on their status. Wouldn't that be a little more bullying than, I don't know, is it? Because is then it? that's a direct approach. Yeah. And you're know. actually, you're not being shady. Yeah, it's just an interesting question to mull over. I don't know. Yeah. Um, my civics teacher in ninth grade, Miss Gouge, said, never write anything down that you don't want the whole world to see. So um, I always kind of think of that now. Even like in my own journal, like I get scared to write down what I actually think about things in case someone finds it later. That's a good point. So we left off with our surprising facts about bullying. Correct. (laughs) (laughs) Correct. You have not told us your surprising fact about bullying yet. What is your surprising fact? Surprising fact, which may not surprise you. (laughs) Um. (laughs) I think I just snorted into the microphone. I'm sorry. Did you know that uh, bullies tend to have been bullied themselves? Ah. You probably knew that because it's, it's kind of common sense. Hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. Mm-hmm. We've heard that before. And I, I feel like a lot of people are eager, not eager, but open to sharing their bullying experiences like we did earlier in this podcast. But it was, it's interesting to think of, have you ever been the perpetrator of bullying like so, have you? Yes. Oh, quick answer. Yeah. Okay, tell us all mm-hmm. about it. Uh, well, actually, the same story of when I was in this after-school program around those kids. I wanted to fit in. Everyone, the cool thing to do at that moment was make fun of the girl who Peter pants. Everyone was pointing and laughing. Aww. It was a big, funny thing. This girl was my friend. It was super hard to come by when you're a bullied outcast. Right. So... I would say say her name and apologize, but then she probably doesn't want to be I, I known honestly, as the girl who Peter pants. I can't remember her name. Yeah, but oh, I, <laughs> well, I was six. <laughs> no, no, I know. But no, sorry, Lisa. I, I, I actually, yeah, Just guessing. I felt um, really bad about it, but I saw an opportunity to fit in. Yeah, yeah. And so we were all under this playground set, like a playpen, and she's under there, kind of hiding because everyone's pointing and laughing at her, going after. Her. <laughs> 
and i'm like oh she had she just peed her pants mm-hmm. like okay in that moment she had and i don't remember the exact insult but it was something along the lines of pee pants pee girl or something real creative like that and i was taunting like oh peed your pants <laughs> I don't remember what I Why were you taunting in a British accent? That's what I want to know. I just, honestly, at this point, I have no idea what I said. (laughs) But you know that you did it. I know I did it. Because it's burned into my brain because of how wrong it was. Right. And I went up to her when everyone else was looking away. And I said... Hey, I actually really do like you, though, but I just want to fit in with those guys. Are you so you openly admitted that? Yeah. That's pretty self-aware. But yeah, I was always very year-old. self-aware of her yeah, kid. Wow. And uh, she goes, "Okay." It and it broke my heart. Like that's not okay. I felt so guilty after that. Yeah, and it just didn't feel good then to join that group. I just kind of went and did something else. And it wasn't felt, worth it. I felt really ashamed. So I learned my lesson right then and there just because she looked so affected by it. And it just killed me. You can picture it all still in your mind right now. Yeah. And what, so what ended up happening with you and her after that? Honestly, after we left that program, I completely lost touch with her anyway because she, well, she didn't go to the same school system, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, but I still felt so bad. Well, I was trying to think of... Because when it, when you've been bullied, you tend to tell yourself this story that like you were always the victim. Oh yeah, and that's how you look back and remember it. But um, I actually have two instances. One, so in um, high school, in tenth grade, my French class took a field trip. I guess you could call it to France, mm-hmm. to Paris. And um, I've apparently my memory is terrible. I always say that my brain is like Teflon because nothing sticks. And and postpartum, you can forget it. Your memory's gone forever. Just kiss it goodbye. But um, my friend, Andrea Fletcher, um, who was on the trip, I saw her at a high school reunion or I just saw her in Alexandria at some point. And she reminded me of these horrible things that we did on this trip. And I was like, what? Oh my God, now that you say that. So there was this girl in ninth grade who she was a year behind us. I, I remember her name. We're we can bleep it out to you, but her name was anyway. Um, I, I can see her so clearly in my mind and I guess she was not thought of as a, a popular girl, which it, I mean, all this is so ironic because I did not think of myself as a popular girl, but somehow I participated and apparently this bullying was my idea. Mm. Oh my God. This you probably is so were bad. just trying to fit in because you've been victimized before. I mean, yeah, or I'm a horrible person, but... Well, we all... Are we, we all have that, you know... What do they say? There's darkness and lightness, light in both of... In, <laughs> That's it. Redo. There's darkness and light in all of us. It's what we choose to act upon. There's some, like, great Harry Potter quote about uh, this, and I can't yeah, think of it right I, now. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. We can throw it up on the screen. Like, we're all a little bit Gryffindor and a little bit Slytherin, is what I'm trying to say. So, just uh, try to act on the Gryffindor. There are good things about Slytherins. Okay. You're such a Slytherin, aren't you? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Hey, it's my ambition. So, um, I mean, this is going to sound so stupid, but I guess she was, sleep- she was asleep, and then she was waking up, and maybe she was having a nightmare. She was so confused, and I led, I just led the rest of our team or, like, group, our student group, to go in her bedroom and just like dance around her and go, you're dreaming, you're dreaming. And just like, we just oh, messed with her. I've done stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm thinking of it as really mean now because yeah. she wasn't in on the joke. Yeah, right? I, I've had some circumstances like that too. So she wasn't designed to be part of it. She was designed to be the butt of it. And so the intention was mm-hmm. not right. And I, right. I do feel really bad about that right now. I mean, there's so many instances I can think of now like, there was this girl in seventh grade. I also remember her. We're actually friends on Facebook now, so I'm definitely not going to say her name. But, like, she was a little bit different. I guess she, dude, she had a learning disability now, that looking back on it as an adult. And then we were all, like, hitting puberty and, like, learning things. And someone said, oh, she scratches herself and then smells her hand. And we thought it was, like, the grossest thing. But I perpetrated that rumor, and then I didn't hang out with her, even though she was super nice yeah. to me. Because of this stupid thing and that was seventh grade and I don't know what I was thinking I don't know can I be forgiven for these things I don't know that's just stuff that kids do and I'm not trying to dismiss it like a Karen or anything yeah but I mean I think it was more like a a circumstance I just it's more like like I went along with the group because I wanted to be part of the group and even though I felt even in that moment that this is wrong I didn't I didn't stop it. Because it's kind of a herd mentality. Yes, but. exactly. Herd mentality. Oh, well, that's happening in America right mm-hmm. now with the, that guy. Anyway, so um, 
the, but my main bullying story so i guess i'm like i'm telling three mm-hmm. um my best friend's name was is well was my childhood best friend she's still alive is what i'm trying to say uh, it's sheetal sheetal patel and um she like came and to cabrini in sixth grade so it was great because i had another indian person with me and yeah. um Anyway, so I was trying to think of how I treated her because I guess I was just a cocky kid, which is strange to me now because I don't have that kind of confidence. But at some point in my life, I did. Hmm. I don't know what happened to it. So, but I would just do things like, so she really, she was a clean freak. She is a clean freak. She's really good at tidying. So when she would come over, I would do things like, let's play a game. And I was like, I'm going to lock you in my bedroom for 15 minutes and let's see how much you can clean it. (laughs) Wait a minute. That's just smart. (laughs) No, it is. But it's also like, I was just blatantly using her and she's like two or three years older than me. I I wanted to call her like live and apologize to her because we're talking about people like being able to do that, but she's at work. So I texted her and I was like, do you ever remember me bullying you? Like when I used to lock you in my room and like make you clean. And she said, oh, please, you were not a bully. I was fully aware that you thought you were tricking me, but I was happy to help you keep the room clean. So I'm glad that I haven't permanently scarred Sheetal for life. But she also said, um, which is sweet. She's like, I'm thinking back on all our stupidity and I can't imagine anyone better to have had than you. No matter what, I knew you had my back and having two girls now, I know how important bullying can be in this generation versus ours. I mean, they have snapchat and tiktok and so many things that Mm. they can be bullied on so um i really wanted to call her live to like discuss because i know if if anybody were the brunt of my like crazy schemes or anything like that it would have been her so sheetal feel free to like be honest about all the things that i did to you because i want to make amends but uh you should you should totally comment below yeah (laughs) yeah so it's an interesting idea trying to go back and and make amends for things that you may not have realized you were doing or you did and you just weren't mature enough to stop it in the moment. I have done that actually. I I remember I had a friend who lived down the road from me. She was a little bit younger than me and I loved to play pretend probably a little longer than I should have because I thought it was so fun to trick people Acting? into thinking that something was happening. In fact, you bring up Harry Potter. I was trying to convince her Harry Potter world was real and it was so much fun for me. Was it not? I was just, I mean, but like I was, I wanted her to think she had magic power so i'd throw stuff up over her head and, and it would fall I'd be like oh my god you just made that fall from the sky and oh, i just got gotcha. such a kick out of it <laughs> but i guess it would be considered bullying i remember like we reconnected on facebook later i was like i am so sorry that i <laughs> we played those stupid jokes like because like i did, did have, so did you tell her that yeah and what'd she say oh yeah we're cool like i mean like, we tried to meet back up um but it, it didn't work out but i mean we're we're facebook friends now we keep up and so i mean it's just it but it, it was so stupid because like i would enjoy hanging out with her but I also really enjoyed like oh she's I, I don't think she really believed it she was just like her she yes. was going along with it we so. probably thought we were bullying people but they were way smarter than us and <laughs> like and they were just humoring us because they're like wow this it kid's really weird it was just fun for me that like and all and this is gonna sound crazy but it made it feel more real for me that Harry Potter would be real if somebody else believed it that, yeah that's kind of my excuse is like well she believes how old are you at this point real. like seventh grade I think it was oh my god old. I'm so much older than you I think Harry Potter came <laughs> out when I was in college <laughs> <laughs> well, if I was doing that oh, college, man. it might be a little weird. <laughs> I know it's still a little weird for seventh grade, but you know, like 13 years old. It was yeah. just, it was fun. We were just having fun. Right. But, eh. It's, it's well, still kind of everyone can agree that bullying just it comes out of a need to feel superior in that moment to another person or a need to feel part of the group mm-hmm. and so if you're not getting that at home or you've been bullied yourself or wherever that comes from you know but the bullying today is like way worse than what we're talking about not saying oh, yeah. not saying that ours wasn't traumatizing because i think we probably only touched the iceberg of our bullying experiences that could be like a five-hour vodcast but And those things were very important to us and they obviously shaped who we were. But like today, you can get bullied in multiple ways, like not just at school, but then on social media, on so many platforms. Like, I don't know how I'm going to protect my son from that. I know. It's insane. Yeah. And just one little mistake is immortalized. Like, imagine how many mistakes we could have made in, in our childhood. Like, dumb things we said or pictures, for God's sake. Like, things that just live forever on the internet. Right. And have caused people to then go and, you know, do Never get to host the Oscars. <laughs> I think we're on two different planes. <laughs> yeah, I, think you are. <laughs> I, I guess I, I was stepping into cancel culture, but oh. let's stick because that maybe C could be for cancel culture. Anyway, that's next oh, week. Oh yeah, um, I got a lot to say about that. Yeah, so I think we're so lucky 
that we grew up and we got to be stupid without it being documented Heck for all of time. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. Whew. So glad. It's just, it's, it sucks for them nowadays. There's just no, I mean, I, in a way, like Josh and I were actually talking about the other day, there's benefits to the way the culture is right now. I think that these kids are probably more socially developed than we were because they have access to the entire world, which yes. is something we didn't have. Right. So they they have to grow up a lot faster and I think they're pretty smart socially. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't have that luxury, so it took me a lot longer. <laughs> but um, like, I'll just hear like, you know, on tiktok or something like i a, still don't understand what is tiktok like what is that it is that vine is it the same thing i'll just put it on <laughs> should i use my old grandma crotchety voice what is the tiktok well there's will smith those are disco lights maybe you're supposed to dance so oh tom it's holland not all dancing uh, so is there like a a sec a time limit 15 seconds or 30 seconds so what is the purpose is, is it like snapchat and kind instagram of. combined it's like i can't keep up with this stuff i was so glad when vine went away so i didn't have to learn it but yeah. now there's tiktok yeah and it's blowing up but i mean you'll see a lot of like the young people on there they're not stupid they've got a, they're very their sense of humor is very intelligent no oh, really maybe not everybody is seeing the intelligent stuff like everyone wants to think tide pods when they think Gen Z, but I, I mean, I get that they're dealing with a lot of bullying stuff too, but I think there's a plus side that they are balancing a lot young and they're learning. They're yeah. learning faster than we did, that the world is a cruel place and that you can't just say and do whatever and, you know, get away with it for the You should tell too. people uh, your TikTok handle. Don't you have one of these yeah. things? Yeah. What is it? Is it Digital Munchies? Let's see. I have a couple of them. Oh yeah. Digital Munchies. So That's tune it. in to Digital Munchies on the TikTok. On the TikTok. <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah, the TikTok yeah. is very cool. You should <laughs> definitely look at the TikTok. Very hip. A plus number one. <laughs> Correct. 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 Well, in conclusion, what would you like to say to the bullies of your past, present, and future? Anything? Me? Yeah. Or them? You guys can oh, say well, that in the comments that, yeah. if you want. You, the viewer. But what would you like to say? Um... I See, y'all weren't that bad because, I mean, people have it a lot worse. So I think you were just being normal kids. You adults, though, what's up? Yeah. What's that about? Mm -mm. Like, yeah, that's who just kind you? of fun. For you to have to be like that to a six year old, what's up? Yeah. That's it. I mean, because, like, really, like, there are people who are bullied by their own parents. There are people who don't feel safe. There's abuse out there. And right. I can't, I feel like I had it really, really good. I don't like what happened to me. I, I do and I don't. I was stronger because of it. I had it good despite, you know. All of that. Yeah. But what about you? I think, um, you know, one of the things that I learned in the, uh, I, I've talked about this Art of Living meditation program I've done, but I've heard it from several sources. So when you're kind of in a conflict with someone or someone has treated you badly, this is very difficult to do in the moment, but you have to realize on some level they're actually doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're capable of in that moment they're doing. So it just may be they don't have the emotional intelligence, understanding to do better than they are in that moment because otherwise, why would they be acting that way? That said, if you don't do the work to become a better person, that's on you. Mm -hmm. You know, So at some point you cross over into adulthood and you need to learn how to navigate conflict and insecurity without hurting other people. Yeah. So I would say you know, if you've been bullied or on behalf of myself to the people who bullied me, I mean, I guess I forgive you or more like, I guess that's just the best you could do in that moment. And certainly it contributed to the person I am today. But if you are a bully, I think it's just a good reflection to look at how you're treating people. And especially if you're an adult, how you're passing that on to either your children or the younger people around you, because it's just modeled behavior. Yep. So do better. It's 100% modeled behavior. And that's kind of how I wanted to wrap the whole thing up anyway, is that Please stop saying, oh, they're just kids. That was something the lady oh, yes. always said to my mom is, they're kids, Patty. And no, they're not just kids. They're humans that are developing. And you are contributing to that development. So please stop saying they're never going to remember that. That's going to mean nothing to them. I remember everything. Mm, that is that such a good point. To me. And, and I mean, everything significant that happened to me, I hold on to and it shaped who I am. So I, I guarantee, like, if this lady is somehow watching this video, run.
just can't swallow her all. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, she's, Cabot Cove. She's going to think this is such a freaking joke. She's laughing right now. She's like, how in the world is this grown-ass woman still going to be talking about something that happened to her when she was six years old? This is pathetic. Obviously, Patty can't raise her kid. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. But it's it your is, truth. It's my story. It's, it's your story. It's my story to tell. And if you're going to act like that to a six-year-old kid... You know, when they're 31 years old, don't be surprised when they tell that story later. Ooh, are we sharing ages? I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll re-say that. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you're young. Wait, that's not you're fair. young. You're young. You can do it. <laughs> I, too, am 31. Wait, you already said 39. Oh, you said I got it. Damn it. Why did I tell people the truth? It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. JLo's 50. She's, she's redefining everything. I, I mean, like, when we're 39 and 31, we'll do... Can we re retroactively fix this? No, I think okay. I think the cat's out of the bag. Okay, but that's such a good point because kids are open, porous sponges. Mm -hmm. So please don't write it off. Yep. Like what happens to them in this at that point in time matters. So anyway, I think it's just about being responsible. Just be responsible for your influence on others, yes. and tell your story. So if you've been bullied, we'd love to hear about it because the more you share your story, the less negative effect it can have on you because. You're letting it out. Let, let it exactly. out. Exactly. There is something therapeutic about that. Yeah. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. I hope y'all did too. Yeah. Am I? Sh I feel like I'm shi even shinier than when we began this. It's podcast. hot in here, and my pits are sweaty. Yeah, she's pitting. You can't <laughs> tell in her Fendi sweater, it's not but she's pitting, and I'm hungry. All right. Well, let's wrap that up. Thank you for joining us on episode two of Pigeonholed. Catch us next week when we possibly discuss C is for cancel culture. Yes, Maybe? I love that idea. Let's now do let's it. fly away. Squawk! 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 <laughs> really, I'm just airing out my pit. <laughs>